this past year, I went on the Peace Walk, which is something we all should do. It's a, well, there are, there, there's an American Peace Walk, I went on the Japanese Peace Walk. That's where I met the Apakusha, and I had time to, to share with the people in there. He had played in Hiroshima. And I remember playing the song that Bob Gibson wrote, Well, Well, Well. That is such a powerful, um, emotional ode of, uh, if you sing it, so you can trust it. And I have to say that that experience was a very formative for me because I spent a week doing conversations and, uh, and dialogues and teachings all around peace education, which is really what the Operation Respect effort is all about. But um, I I came away realizing that something had changed in me. And for a variety of reasons, the president of Warner Brothers Japan called me up and he said, Peter, we want, we, we were thinking, who should write a song using as a basis poem of the Dalai Lama? And I said, why? Why do you, why are you doing this? We, we're a Buddhist nation, and the Dalai Lama is extremely important to us. Our hearts are broken because what has happened in Tibet. And we decided that you're the one we want to have right if you will try. And if you do, you will come to Japan. And there, the Dalai Lama and you will do a joint presentation. And you'll explain a little bit of your process of writing the song. And the two of you will have an exchange. And I read the poem, and I said, well, I'm going to give it the best I can. It's, it was not a lyric, but, you know, when you sing a song, if you don't read the words, and in your heart, then, or understand, then you're being true to the song. As Mary used to say, songs have some rights. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I began to think about it, and the Dalai Lama's words were, and this is a quote, and it's one of the lyrics he said, Love everyone. Okay, I can get behind that. Yes. Love all strangers. No? Okay. All right. Give everybody the benefit of the doubt that love is a little over the of the margins of my past, but yes, I understand. I can say that. Love all strangers. Love even your enemy. Oops. <laughs> Have you seen this, the, the hatred and venom that is spewing out because of this conflict in the Middle East? I mean, it is so shocking to me. The conflict itself is beyond the beyond, but the, the fury of people who are writing with no, no understanding that the people involved, all of them are human beings. It's, it's devastating equally so. That time is that how can I, how can you love even your enemy? 
going. I spent a lot of last year working with the town of Utah to create a concert of togetherness, of reaffirmation, of bringing hearts together to turn this pain and tragedy into something quite positive. And, and they have made this what's called the Sandy Hill Promise, which means we who lost our children in this tragedy want to be remembered not as the place of blood and, and, and horror, but as the place where transformation was, was sparked. That, that we became the genesis of transformation and change. And how powerful and meaningful. And Francine Wheeler, who delivered the presidential address before the gun vote that was unsuccessful, had lost her six year old son back. Well, I was, because I was in the midst of all this, and putting that together, and then it came by television. Uh, so, as an advocacy piece, interspersed, by the way, if you go to uh, uh, Bill Moyer's website, you can see that show and the interview with Francine Wheeler and her husband David. Well, the good news is, I just saw Francine, and she's five months pregnant with her injury. And she, went, she didn't want to live. I mean, we speak to her too. too. Well, in reference to that, when I was thinking of Adam Long's who committed this, it described a horrific act where he took his gun and he mutilated the children so comprehensively that he killed that they could not be identified by except by their clothes. Uh, all of a sudden, in the midst of this, I began to think of him as a wretched, tortured soul who had been bullied terribly. And all of a sudden, it came to me that I could have fury for his act, but I could have some level of compassion for that tortured soul. And then I understood the Dalai Lama's words. How can you love your enemy? You, in the Buddhist tradition, you separate the act from the, uh, from the human being. You despise the act. But if you have compassion, it's a way of loving the human being. And then there were the other words that I had to absorb. And you know what? In his lyric, he tells us how each of us can help each day to make peace. How many of you wake up each day and say, I know what I can do today to make peace? It's pretty simple. We all have that option. He said, love everyone, love all strangers, love even your enemy, love everyone, and everyone will join you to work for peace. Meaning that there is some powerful force about loving people that makes people say, I want that too. That simply by loving people, you're building peace. So that was the uh, we saw him. Now, when I got to see him, I was I waited for his first part to be over, and in this part he said, "I I have stepped down from the political leadership of my country. I'm now a simple country Buddhist priest. Please don't call me your holiness." Clearly, he felt he was 
So when I get on the on stage, I, I was all prepared to say, your holiness. But I didn't. I said, my brother. And he looked at me and said, my brother, let's rub noses. <laughs> you don't make this stuff up. So we stood there rubbing noses. <laughs> I have pictures. And then he said, let's touch foreigners and you touch foreigners. <laughs> this man is so filled with joy and he's seen so much pain, so much gratitude. You cannot help but be inspired and hopeful in his presence. And then he sat down and then I sang a song. And uh, then he took a white scarf and he put it around my neck, which is traditional. And then he took a smaller scarf and put it around my guitar. So this is the song. And as you figure it out, we'll, uh, we'll do it, okay? And it is recorded, but it's not available to you. Unless you go to Japan, in which case, bring me a guitar. <laughs> Never give up, no matter the pain and sorrow, never give up. You'll find your tomorrow in natural heart. It will lead you your loving heart.
was on the right thing, their, their fury will rise. And I don't, I don't want to antagonize anybody, and I don't want to be vilified. But just like Ozzy, Ruby, there come times when it's a matter of conscience. You have to say what's in your heart or do something that might make a wave or two. When Peter, Paul, and Mary got arrested in front of the crowd of South African embassy uh, as part of the anti-apartheid movement, we stepped over a line. We just literally we weren't allowed to stand on the other side of the line. <laughs> in Washington, and over 3,000 people got arrested in that effort. But we, we've had a lot happen recently with Occupy Wall Street, and now we have coming up, and I must say proudly that my daughter is one of the organizers, of something that has to do with something that's extraordinarily powerful and really upsets people when it's done. When you say, I'm sorry, it's really powerful. When you say, I made a mistake, and you are a nation saying it, it's really powerful. But we in this country do not have a habit of examining the things that we've done that are painful, injurious, and wrong-headed, and have killed, and we just go on like a, like a, like a, like a, a, a hit run driver. Boom, we hit Vietnam. 3,000, 3 million people are killed in these generations of children with Asian origin. What do we do? What? And we walk around, all of us, we know we haven't had the dialogue. Germany had a dialogue of decades and decades to examine how the hell that happened. Here, we hit, oh! Keep driving. Well, who's that matter? Is that all those are people tortured in front of Don't look back. Don't discuss it. Never happened. This kind of collective and need is, is breaking our hearts. And how can we change that? Well, let me tell you what happened. I was in Vietnam after seeing these kids in French Republic. And I had a concert that night at the Hanoi Opera House, just like the Paris Opera House, only small. And I was about to say, blowing in the wind, and I said, I can't sing this song till I tell you what's in my heart. And I'm not speaking for any other Americans, just for myself. What my country did to your country is horrific. And it breaks my heart to see these children for whom the war is an act of reality every day, with no arms and no legs and distorted faces, like the little one disfigured because it's in the genes, it's in, you can't get it out. And I'm telling you now as one American, I'm deeply, deeply sorry for you. And the peace came over. And it hit the Southeast Asian papers. When it hit the AP here in America, I started to get uh, uh, those emails, you know, telling me to cut off my head and put it someplace unfashionable. And feel it, because I said, I am the sheriff. Like this gypsy chick shut up and said. But if we can say that a great human being is one who can recognize his or her mistakes and then make amends, why would we not say that a great country has that same problem? Perhaps the most genocidally affected people who live.
live in the squalor and the deprivation with their culture destroyed, the heart of their hearts. Men are our first nations people. And so my daughter, who is a practitioner of First Nations spirituality, has been working with a small group to do something quite remarkable. And I know that David Amram is coming down to the Black Hills. It's a concert. It's called the Unity Concert. To bring people together, to acknowledge it's, it's, it has a wiping of tears ceremony, of forgiveness and acknowledgement, and it's all ceremonial based. And David is a great, great, knowledgeable person in this arena. And I'm helping to organize it. So are the, there are these points of light, of possibility. The important thing is that President Obama has said that if the great Sioux nations come to with a united plan, a unified plan, he will listen to them and he will do what he can, of course, at this point administratively, because nothing can get done in, in the Congress. Because it's, it's, it's great. Certainly nothing that would show him in a good light as the 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 continued virulent attacks against him. So that perhaps maybe their wish will be granted that it'll be a long time before we have another person of color in the White House, but that's just a guess. But if he does that and he moves us in that direction, the way he did without saying, you know, people who are in jail for things that are no longer legal probably shouldn't be in jail, therefore, they made a move in that direction. You know, for those who are serving 10 years for an infraction that's no longer against the law, they are the law of their years. So, let me say about the Middle East and then say this last song uh, with my friends. And I know this is a long ride chart, but I felt that so much is happening. I was, I had been working for two years for something that almost took place, a concert. See, music brings together the way Pete talks. He was a great teacher. If we can sing together, all of a sudden we don't want to push somebody away. Oh, I don't like your hat. Oh, I don't like your ball hat. You know what I mean? We don't have that. But we had a concert ready on June 10th in Ramallah at 11 in West Jerusalem, an undisputed territory, with uh, American and non-Middle non Eastern artists, and also uh, uh, Israeli and Palestinian artists, and it was a first step. And we were all set to go, and then we had to be canceled because the hostilities increased. Look, Once people are, are fighting in their blood, there's pain everywhere. But when people have been living in, in, in oppression, like in a large Warsaw ghetto, for going on 50 years, they're not quite in the same state of mind as people who have not had that before. And as we look at what's happening here, and we have empathy for all the people. Remember that the narratives that have hardened, that have obliterated our ability to acknowledge that reality need to be challenged. I won't go further than that, but I will sing this last song with all of us together. And it is, it's got to be sung each time by me because it's the song that Peter Paul and Mary never failed to say for the regular performance. So here it is. How many roads must 